Hey, and welcome back to another video. And today we'll be using LM Studio to connect a local open source LLM to Autogen. And then we'll also interweave MemGPT in as well. I'll go over how to start using LM Studio, how to connect that to Autogen, and then also how to use MemGPT in the code as well. We'll review the code, then go through an example. So let's get started. First off, that's Simba. But secondly, this is LM Studio. So you're going to go to lmstudio.ai. And then all you're going to do is come over here and click the download LM Studio for whatever system you have. After you download it, just go through the process of installing it and then go ahead and start the application. Once you start the application, you'll be greeted with this home screen. And so this is the main page of LM Studio. And all the stuff down at the bottom is just, just news and huge information about some of the models. But all we need to care about uh, for this for this purpose is in the top middle here is a search and what you do here is you can type in some open source llm so i'll type in mistral and what i'm going to do is i'm going to then click go and it's going to take a second and what it's going to do is give you all of the this list of all of the models for mistral and then once you're here uh, there's a couple things we can do is so right now it's sorted by most recent so it's whatever was updated most recently will be up here, but you can also sort it by the most likes. So as you can see, this one has the most likes so far for the Mistral model. So we could we could just do this, right? So I've already downloaded a couple here. So whenever you click on whichever one you wanna click on, doesn't matter. You can come over here on the right and you'll see these are all of the model sizes. So I've already downloaded like Q3 and I've downloaded the Q5 models. So just go ahead and just choose one to download. It doesn't matter. So what I'll do is I'll just download, uh, download this top one, Q2. So you just click the download button. And whenever you do that, it will show up here. And you can see that it's starting to download. And we'll be back whenever this is done downloading. Okay, and now it's finished. Now, the next thing we need to do is you come over here to the left and there's like these two little, this like double sided arrow. You click on that. And at the top here, it says select a model to load. So click this drop down, and we just downloaded this one. So this is the Mistral uh, Q2. So go ahead and click that. It's going to load the model for you. And then whenever it's done loading the model, we just have one more step. And right here, you can see there's a server port, and there's a couple options here. Don't, don't worry about changing those out. Uh, but all that's going to happen is we're going to start the server, and this HTTP uh, local host here, we're going to take that we're gonna put that into the code for Autogen. So instead of connecting to OpenAI's uh, API directly, we don't need to do that. You don't need an API key for this because this is a local open source LLM using LM Studio. So we're just gonna connect to the local host here, which will then allow us to chat with this model. So now that is done, all you have to do is click Start Server and boom, we're ready to go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move to the next section, which is um, getting Autogen ready, and I'll go through the code, but we're going to take this local host, uh, this HTTP local host, and this is the API to connect to the local server so we can use this model. Let's see how that works. Okay, now that the LM Studio side is taken care of, the next thing is to get Autogen and MemGTP ready. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and create a new project. I'm going to go ahead and create the files, and I'm just going to review it, and then we'll run it and see how it works. Okay, now that the files are created, the first one I'm going to go over is the .env file, and this is where I want to hold all of my environment properties. So a good practice is to not hard code the properties in, for instance, in our app.py file, which I'm going to show you in a second. You don't want to hard code like the API base, your key, your model, or some other general properties. It's good to have them in environment variable because if I need to change the key or the base, like say I did something wrong here, I can easily just come to here and this is so much easier to read and handle instead of going all the way through your Python code, looking for it and then changing it there. Either way, we have the API key. Again, uh, because it's the local LLM, you don't need an API key, but you just need to put some dummy value here. Uh, the API base is the URL that we're going to connect to LM Studio. So that's what this value is. The API type is still open AI. And then add this value for whether or not we want to use memgpt agents. So by default, I just set it to true. All right, now going to the main Python file, the first thing is take care of the imports. So we have a few things to import. We have pyautogen, py memgpt, python-.env, and then open AI. All right, so you just type pip install, uh, go ahead and run this command, and then we'll get started. 
Right, so the first function here, this load.env, all it's doing is allowing us to load the environment variables from the .env file so that we can use them throughout the code. Next, we have the config list. This is where we retrieve the API type base and key from the environment uh, file that we just created by saying os.getEnvironment and then the name of the key that holds the value. So once we get API key, which we just have a dummy value for, it's going to give us the value sk-12345 or whatever you have it set to. All right. And then we also had to set open AI dot API, API underscore key and API underscore base as well. So we're going to, again, set the key and base from our environment variable. And this is where it's nice. If you have it separated out, we can change the base or the key here that in the environment variable and it'll automatically change here. So we don't have to worry about it anymore. The next thing is the LLM configuration. So the first parameter is the config list. Well, we, just created that, so we're gonna put that in here. And then the seed, so the seed is whenever we run this for the first time, this is seed 44. So it's gonna create a directory under the project called cache. Then under that directory, it's gonna have the number for the folder. So it'll have a folder called 44. And every time we run this, and every time we run this after the first time, we're gonna get the same responses back from the model. Okay, so it's it stores and caches the responses it already got. So if we run this, it'll just give us back all the responses in like a couple seconds, all right? If you ever wanna have different responses, just change the number here, okay? Just change the number and you'll get something new. The request timeout is set to 600 or about five minutes. And I just set the temperature here to 0 0.7. It doesn't really matter for this example, but I'm just trying this out. And now we get into creating the agents. So the first agent is the user proxy agent and all it is is that's, that's you and me, okay? So that's gonna be us. So I named this user proxy. The message, the system message, this is kind of defining the persona and description of the agent. So we're going to be human admin. And under the code execution config parameter, the main thing here is the working directory. So whenever the code is finished, it is going to or supposed to create the Python file or whatever type, uh, whatever type of file it is. It's going to put it and create another directory under our project directory called group chat and store the files there. For human input mode, I put never here. By default, it's always. So if I just like deleted this, then it would be considered always. But I'm not worried about, for this example, uh, chatting with the model. And now we have the assistant agent. So this is considered our first AI agent. And this one is going to be a product manager. The system message is simple. And then for the third parameter, we just give it the LLM configuration. So it is going to go to LM Studio using the API base, it's going to connect to this, connect to the server that we already started. And then it's going to take that model that we loaded and chat with that model. This little bit of code isn't necessary. This is just to allow us to debug MemGPT whenever we, whenever you want to use it. Um, it kind of allows you to see more of the inner workings of it and uh, see how it works and how it uh, talks back and what's going on in the memory management system. But this isn't necessary. This is just um, so if you want to use it, then you can see what's kind of going on under the hood. So I set this variable to be a Boolean type from the environment variable that we set to true, which is called use memgpt. Uh, it comes back as a string, so I just have to set it to a type of bool. And here we are either not going to use it, and then we're going to create uh, an agent that is going to be the coder, or we are going to use it, and then we're going to create a special function that is given to us by MemGP that, MemGPT that allows us to connect using Autogen. And we're going to create this uh, MemGPT coder if we want to use it. And it's a little different because here you use a persona description and a user description. The persona description basically is like, what am I? Okay. And then the user description is kind of like, um, what am I doing in this group? Like what is kind of my role? The interface arguments parameter, this is where we're going to put all the debug set to true. Again, you don't need this, it's not necessary, but it's just for, so if you want to see what's going on, you can here. And then if we're not gonna use memgpt, then we simply just have a regular assistant agent. Uh, it's gonna be a coder. And then you have your system message, which is the same down here, just all put together in the same parameter. And then here we give the LLM config. Next, we have to create a group chat. So this is going to be of all the agents and we want them to chat together. So we had to create a group chat instance or create the object, the first parameter agent. This is where we're going to define the array of agents. So myself, the user proxy, the product manager and the coder. 
those are the three agents that we're going to be using. And then messages, does, doesn't matter. Uh, the max rounds, I'm just going to have set to two um, because I just kind of want to get it done. It's just, this is just an example. Um, and then we need to create a group chat manager object. And the first parameter here is the is called group chat. And this is where we give it uh, basically all of the agents that are going to be talking with each other. And then finally, you give it the LLM config. And then finally, we have to initiate the chat, right? So it's you and me, we're going to initiate the chat with the manager, which is the first parameter. And then the second parameter is the message. So we want to say, create a simple, uh, ra simple random number generator in Python. That's it. You know, just something simple. Uh, this is just to kind of show you all the connections with each other. So I'm going to run this offline and we'll be back with the results. Okay, so now we finished. Uh, now I'm in LM Studio. And here we can see the interaction it had from uh, the Python file. So here in LM Studio, it went ahead and created the implementation in Python. Uh, here is the code. It doesn't quite look like the code here because it's not formatted um, the way it's easily to see, which I'll show you uh, in PyCharm here in a second. But uh, here is the interaction it had with our model that we had loaded in LM Studio. And that's what we wanted, right? So now let's go over to PyCharm. So now back in PyCharm, we can see this code a little bit better and like the conversation, um, it's formatted easier for us to see. Uh, we can show that we use memgpt as the coder. Uh, we Here's the message that I, or the task that I wanted to create a simple number generator in Python. And because I didn't explicitly say that the product manager don't code at all and that I only want the coder to write the code you know, it, it's fine. I, my prompting was kind of off, but it, it's not really the point of this. I didn't, wasn't really worried about it, but the product manager decided to write the code for us. And that's just how it was. And, you know, it's a simple, simple file. Um, and just prints out the random number generated between one, random number between one and 100. Okay. So this is it. This is how we connect LM studio to Autogen and mem GPT. Awesome guys. So we took an open source LLM and we were able to connect it to Autogen and MemGPT. And one of the best things is because we were able to use an open source LLM, we didn't have to worry about having an API key, which means that we didn't have to spend money. And it's always nice to not spend money to, especially when you're just testing things out. And my next video will be going over Autogen in detail, taking a deeper dive into the agents, how they work, all the parameters and functions. So we're all gonna be understanding how Autogen works better. Have a great day guys, and I'll see you next video.